Hello and welcome to our introduction for the new Avastar Retarget tool. So, what is this all about? Well, in simple words, the Retarget tool allows to remap an existing animation, one that was made for a specific rig, to another different armature, even when its bone structure differs. Actually this tool makes it possible to begin with loading for example ready-made animation files into Blender. You could use the BVH importer for this, or the FBX importer or any other tool that loads animations. Then in a second step the Avastar retarget tool can be used to transfer the imported animation to the Avastar rig. From where it eventually can be exported to Second Life. So, Let's start with adding a new basic Avastar character to the scene. I could add a character with meshes here, but for our purpose it is enough to load a skeleton. Now we only need an animation. So let's import one of the Second Life default animations for the begin. Navigate to File. Import. Motion Capture. Then, select your animation. Please note that ready-made Second Life animations use the unit of inches. However, BVH files do not know anything about scale units, so the size of the imported armature is in general not defined. And because of this, we have to rescale the import to Blender units, otherwise we might end up with a giant armature in the viewport. We can set the scaling right in the importer's operator panel. For importing Second Life animations, the scaling needs to be translated from inches to meters, which happens to be 0.0254. But in general you have to find out the scaling for your BVH files by experiment. When the upload of the BVH file was successful, then a new armature appears in the viewport. Let's move the Avastar character a bit sideways, so we can watch both armatures side by side. Also hide the face bones and the hand bones as we do not need them right now. And finally, we can change the display to show octahedral bone shapes. Note, sometimes the imported rig seems to come in with a wrong rotation as you can see here. But you don't need to worry about this for now, it is just how the animation has been posed at its start frame. Now let us inspect the retarget tool options in more detail, by opening the retarget vertical tab. Here we find two panels, one for the retarget transfer, and further down another one for the retarget mapping. Note, these panels are only available when you have at least one Avastar character, and at least one other armature in your current scene. And when we have exactly two armatures in the scene, then Avastar can even find out which rig is the imported animation source, and which is the animation target. So, in our case, the armatures have already been correctly assigned, and we can proceed to the next step. That is, we need a reference frame. The reference frame contains both rigs in the same pose, or at least in a very similar pose and all calculations for the retarget procedure will be based on this reference frame. The reference frame can be any frame in the timeline, and it ideally contains the armature's rest poses, which of course need to be similar as well. However, if your animation file does not contain a rest pose, then you can move to any frame outside of the imported animation, switch the source to pose mode, select all bones, and reset the bone rotation. Finally key all bones, by hitting the I key on the keyboard, and set keys only for rotations. In our case we have used frame 0 for this purpose. Note, we also have to adjust some options in the retarget transfer panel as follows. First, disable the option, use rest pose. Second, Ensure that the reference frame is set to the correct number, in our case it must be zero. Also, because we are importing a legacy animation, we disable the option, with translation, simply because legacy animations do not use translations, except for the pelvis bone. 
Now you might wonder why I have not used the rest pose as reference. I will return to this at the end of the video for a brief explanation. Remember that any frame can be used as reference frame. You only need to make sure that the two poses of the source rig and the target rig match as good as possible in size, rotation and scale. You even can additionally pose the source bones and the target bones manually for a better matching if that is necessary. This comes in very handy when your imported animation contains for example finger animations. In this case you often have to repose the fingers for a better match, because the second life character's hand rest pose is very unique, and needs almost always some tweaking. However, in our case this additional tweaking is not necessary, so we can advance to the next step where we create the bone mapping. We do this in the retarget mapping panel. Actually you specify here, which bone on the target rig receives the animation data from which bone on the source rig. This is typically a manual task. However, in some cases Avastar can even guess the mapping automatically. In this demo Avastar identifies the imported BVH file as a second life animation, and it calculates an automatic mapping, based on its finds. Note that this animation does not contain bones for the feet and toes. This is normal for BVH files which have been made for the Second Life Legacy character. Please also note that Avastar assumes the length of the animation is defined by the distance between the start frame and the end frame of the imported action, in this case from frame 0 to frame 59. So, we are now done with the preparations and finally we can switch back to the retarget transfer panel and start the transfer motion operator. You might need to wait a few seconds, or often even longer, until the transfer has been fully processed. By now the animation has been fully transferred to the Avastar character, and now you can play, modify, and finally export the transferred animation for example as .anim file, and then import your animation file into Second Life. Of course there are a few more caveats to be taken into account. For example in this demo I decided to not use the animation rest poses as reference for the transfer. The reason for this is not very obvious, so let me show you the issue. Remember that when I prepared frame 0 for the reference, I did only reset the bone rotations, but I did not touch the locations. And I did this for a good reason. Look what happens when I reset both, the rotations and the translations. Now you see that the imported rig has its origin at the pelvis, while the Avastar origin is located on the ground floor. So, the imported animation comes with an initial location offset to get the character above ground. But unfortunately the target transfer tool will see this initial offset as part of the animation, which is wrong. Because of this it became necessary to create our own reference pose to get a correct result. You may now understand better that each imported rig may have its own little quirks and pitfalls. As a consequence you always have to carefully inspect your setup, in order to get acceptable results. But for now we are done, and I wish you a lot of fun with Avastar.